like to share with you my experience as an administrator. And you know what? Uh, during the first part of this pandemic, the first part of the lockdown, I am just like many of you, especially the administrators or the owners, who are very stressed about the future of our, of our school. Um, there were many occasions that I am thinking what will happen to the school. So there are so many concerns that we had, so many things in my mind about will there be resumption of classes this school year as a private institution? That is really the concern. So I, I, want to, I want to share with you my thought process during this time. And I, share, I would like to share you this slide. No? You can choose about two things. Okay, let me, sh let me share this slide. We can choose, number one, to allow the situation to petrify us. For the Harry Potter, Harry pa Potter fans, you know, the word petrify is to, to, uh, to stop us to a point of submission or to allow the situation to edify us of possibilities and opportunities that we can pursue. So there are two, two alternatives. We can be petrified to submission and to be hopeless. And maybe number two, be edified, be, be enlightened, be taught of the experiences that we are having now, of what we need to do. Because whether we like it or not, this pandemic forced us to, to rethink, to reimagine, and to think out of the box. So what do you mean by edified? So in the experience of DYCI and personally, next slide please, to be edified is to learn. So to learn is number one, during the time so that I can, uh, I can learn and I can really understand what's happening around, I have, first of all, I have to listen to everyone, to the optimists, to those people na kaya yan, kaya yan. I have to listen to them. Second, even to the, to, do, the, to the negative thinkers, to the naysayers, to the experts, to the kids, to the parents, to the experience, etc. So what do, what do I mean by this? I listen to everyone. There were so many occasions that uh, we had Zoom uh, on, uh, online conferences with students from junior high school. Yes, even students. I had the Zoom meeting with students from junior high school, senior high school, college. And then I had two rounds of... Uh, uh, meetings through online also with parents and of course with our employees. I also had long chats with my friends from the United States. Why? I want to know because they are already experienced about online learning. So I want to know what their experiences were as parents. And I also asked my sisters, my sister rather, who is, who's, uh, whose children have already experienced online learning in Manila. So I, I listened, I, I, I removed first the judgment, hindi muna ako nagusga kung anong magandang gawin, I just listened. Listen to the pros and cons. Second is to empathize with all stakeholders. It is not just to sympathize, but to empathize. When you say empathize, you have to put yourself in their place. I have to put my place, uh, myself in the place of parents. Of course, parents would only want the best for their kids. But at this time, of course, ano una nila? Safety. So kailangan ko maintindihan kung bakit maraming parents ang medyo ayaw, parang ayaw nilang magkaroon ng pasukan this year. I have to also empathize with students. That's why I had to have uh, so many times of uh, uh, Zoom conferences with them. I have to listen to them. I have to listen to their messages in chats. So. I have to put myself in their place. I also have to put my place in the place of you, dear teachers, because I'm also a teacher. So we all need to really put ourselves in the place of the people who are affected by this new normal education. Third is after listening, empathizing with the people involved with all the stakeholders, you have to now assess and address the concerns. You have to itemize, you have to, uh, put them to writing and ask yourself, what do they say? Do they have a point? What are they saying? What do I need to really hear and apply in 
the new normal of education starting this school year. And after that, this is the exciting part. Actually, even though it's not exciting, you have to make it exciting. You have to reimagine things. This time, you should not be uh, limited by the four walls of the classroom and excite yourself by what? Thinking out of the box. Getting out of the box. So you need to get out of it and really think, ano ba possibility? I think, sabi nga ng mga management gurus, there should, be, there should be no box at all. You have to excite yourself with the limitless possibilities. So if we are teaching face-to-face, -face, then what are the avenues that we can really uh, adapt, consider during this new normal? That's how to reimagine things. And finally, you have to never stop improving. What I'm going to share to you, dear audience, dear teachers, dear fellow partners in edu dear fellow educators and partners in education, what I'm going to share with you are works in progress. I cannot say that these are best practices either. No. These are, these are outputs of long, long-standing um, style strategies that we have gathered and tweaked a little bit. So we, I cannot say that these are the best. Uh, maybe now at this point, these are the things that I'm sharing with you, but tomorrow when we reassess things, maybe there will be different and better options. So what I'm trying to say is we have to continuously improve ourselves. As the Japanese word will tell us, Kaizen, continuous improvement is key. Okay, let's proceed. So how did we develop our strategies? I'm sharing all of this with you because I know you, there are decision makers who are listening, who are watching, and also dear teachers, you are the uh, decision makers in your own classrooms with your own students. So I'd like to first tell you how we did this. So the strategies were developed through our, what we call the four C's. The first one, as I have said, when I discuss learn, we have to have constant and endless and unceasing consultation. Yes, we have to consult, consult, consult. Even though you have the best workforce in your institution, you still have to consult with the people in the external environment of your school. Kaya po, alam nyo, uh, I'm not... Um, I, am, I, I would like to praise our, Dep Ed, our Department of Education, especially our DepEd Secretary, for the firmness of her decisions. And at the same time, the leadership that she is showing, that she continues to consult with everyone, and the firmness in pursuing what is important in these consultations. That when she consults, she really knows what's important, that we have to continue with education. So that's the first one. You have to consult so that you can have um, different ideas, different strategies that you can consider. But when you consult, of course, obviously we have to have an open mind. Second one is, this is very important, cultural change or culture change maybe. What do we mean by this? Education has always been face-to-face -face, and we know that's the best way to instruct to edify our students face to face. But we have to have a change in the style, but not only in the style, but in the way of life of teachers. So kung before, 10% lang ang paggamit ng computer, maybe now it's 30%, 40%, you have to change. And again, I like to use the word again, you have to excite your fellow educators. I know, a lot of things are uncertain, but if we can change the mindset of people that even though it's uncertain, we have a lot of things also to, to accomplish because, because this is a whole new ball game. We are not limited with the possibilities. We can be agile, we can be flexible. So that's the culture that we have to impart. How? It all starts with the leadership. It's hard. So personally for me, here in the school, I have to show, I have to show leadership, I have to show servant leadership, and I have to show the vision. 
So what does this mean? I have to, I have to tell them that there is a plan. We don't have to wear, worry amidst the uncertainty. There are things that we can do. You must be the beacon of light. You have to be the beacon of hope. And you have to be the beacon of vision for your company in order to have a cultural change. The third C is what we call the concretization and conceptualization of plans. You consulted, you have changed, you have opened the minds of your, of your people. Now it's time for concretization, specific plans. And after that, and this is very hard because you have to see the nitty gritty and the details and you have to have attention to the details of what you're going to do. Uh, actually, the things that I'm going to share with you, we started um, brainstorming about this during the last week of April. So we were just able to finalize everything last week of May. So it was a one month of brainstorming and then tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. And after that, it should not end there. You have to communicate it with your stakeholders. Who are the most important stakeholders here? Regardless if you are from the public or private schools, the students, the parents, you have to show them that you are ready, okay? So hopefully everyone is still up and following what I've been saying. Okay, so what are we go what am I going to share with you? Let me share with you this. The reimagined learning program. This is what we call the reimagined learning program, which means the roadmap for excellent and inclusive modalities and approaches towards a God-centered and innovative new normal of education for our DCNs. Actually, they are not just words. Here at DYCI, it is very important for us uh, to include these words, excellence, inclusivity or inclusion, God-centeredness, innovation, because you know that modesty aside, we have been pursuing robotics for more than a decade now. And they see and stand for the name of our students. So this is what we call the reimagined program. Roadmap for excellent and inclusive modalities and approaches towards a God-centered and innovative new normal of education for our DCNs. So now I'd like to share with you the details about this. Okay, so let's proceed. Uh, previous. Next, one more, one more, move forward, okay. And the five S anchors of our reimagined program. Ano yung mga kinoconsider namin in making this reimagined? After the four Cs, now that we are already in the concretization of our program, uh, pasensya na po, no, dear educators, ang hili ko po sa mga 5SC, uh, acronyms, so that we can easily understand. No? So here, these are the anchors of our imagined program. The first one is to consider the safety, not only of the students, but also the teachers and the, the non-academic community of DYCI. Number two is, it's not only the safety, but we have to make sure that the quality of instruction is significant and there is a certain high level of standards that we're going to impart to the students. Number three is the concern of parents, the supervision concerns of parents. Number four is the solutions available both online and offline for teachers and students as well. Ano ba yung mga possible na pwede namin consider? And number five, student welfare development. Here at DYCI, we do not only concentrate on the academics. So the challenge for us is to also include the co-curricular or the extracurricular online or offline in this new normal. So these are the five S, safety, significance of quality, supervision, solutions available, and the student welfare development. So now let's go to the modalities. Okay, so the modalities. We have online and offline. Uh, for us, for all of us, um, many schools just choose online na lang or offline na lang. But for us, our premise from the very start is to be inclusive. 
So we have to give all possible uh, ways on how to reach the students and how they can have quality learning. So for those who have good internet connection, we have this online, okay? We have this online portal. We will be using the vSmart Learning Management System from Vibal and under original portal that was developed by our own ICT head, Sir Romil Jimeno. So it is just like uh, the portals wherein we can upload our videos, our lectures, our exercises, our activities. So it will be the standard way of doing online learning. But recognizing the reality here in our nation, there are still a lot of people who are, who are offline or having difficulty in having internet connectivity in their houses or in their households. So for offline users or for offline learners, I should say, we will be using books and of course, a flash drive per student. So actually, we already have an example of this. Okay, if you can see this, uh, you can see this. Okay, so this is a sample. So, but the important thing here is, maybe the question is, so what's, what's inside? So what's inside? Okay, the content in every flash drive. Number one is the videos. We call these videos, again, another acronym, no? the video instructions every week for students. These are not just um, uh, videos that we downloaded from YouTube, no. These are videos that we ourselves made and recorded, okay? The examples, you can see, I myself already have nine videos and one podcast. Podcast is recording your voice, so. You see, uh, we already have uh, our teachers having their uh, lecture videos, okay? Okay, next. Uh, let's see this video. Just an example, a 30-seconder video of one of our guest lecturers. Have. So I hope you can follow along, and I'll try to build it slowly and at a good speed so that you guys can go with me. We'll start with the motor. As the you lay out the paper that you guys have. So I hope you can follow along and I'll try to build it slowly and at a good speed so that you guys can go with me. We'll start with the motor as the most important part. We'll take the two parts, the two motors, kind of lay them down and it's kind of the way you lay out the model. It's a really cool way to kind of see where you go, kind of in the middle, see if you need it to be far apart and, and really kind of get, get to know where your wheels are gonna be. We'll take the eight module axle with a nail. So it's got to stop and really easy to push it through. You put it one on one side. Okay. So that's an example of one of our video lectures and actually it's still raw. We haven't put the text and other labels to the videos, but that's the example of what we're going to do. So let's proceed to the next. So the flash drive has number one, videos of all the subjects. Okay, second, it, the flash drive also contains modules. And those modules were formatted through our own style. What is this style? We call it the ideas format. Introduction, discussion, example, activities, then synthesis format. Actually, yung synthesis, uh, kahapon ko lang sinabi dun sa meeting namin. Kaya itong paki, these things that I will be showing to you, wala pa pong word na synthesis. But our hardworking teachers already finished with their first grading modules. This will be included in our uh, flash drives. So according to our head of uh, basic education, Actually, we are 80%, 90% done with the learner's modules. So I'm really blessed with uh, very hardworking faculty members. Okay, so let's proceed. So maybe the next question is, how are we going to implement this? So of course, the first thing is, what will be the schedule? Okay, 
I had the opportunity and we had the opportunity to read uh, a lecture or a rather, sorry, a research about the, the span of time that um, learners at home should be spending during this new normal. And there were suggestions that, for example, uh, ballpark figures, uh, for example, uh, kinder to grade three, it should only be one hour to one and a half hours. Grade four to grade six will only be from uh, for two and a half hours. Grade six to grade eight, I think, is three and a half hours. Grade nine to 12 will be four and a half hours. So that will be the basis. But if you notice, if you can zoom your screen, you will notice that the things that we included here are not only um, the subjects, okay? We also included here spiritual activities like the deepening, that means a reflection on the word of God. There's a praise and worship. And if you notice on the Monday, there's such thing as a home time, hear out my everything. That's the counseling time. Or sabi ko nga sa mga teachers, yan yung kamustahan para magkaroon kayo ng time, makipag-bonding sa mga estudyante, and you will know also their mental health. Kasi it's so hard to stay just in, at home. So all these subjects were given and attributed particular time uh, considering the, the revised competencies expected, okay? Expected from us by the Department of Education. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, this is very crucial. Uh, every, every week, there will be a live discussion. There will be a live discussion for all students with their expert teachers for science, for English, for math, for Filipino, and Araling Panlipunan. We call this the HODL, another acronym. Hour of Understanding and Detailed Discussion Towards Learning Excellence. Why, why did we really put this as a rule or a policy in our schedule? I, I asked the comments of our alumni who are now studying in Manila, in leading universities during this quarantine. And they were telling me, uh, of course, uh, I cannot blame the universities because we were all groping for form, so to speak, uh, from March to May that uh, there were times that they were just allowed, uh, they were just asked to have independent learning. And of course, if they have questions, the professors are, ask, are telling them, you can text me. But you know, there are also timid students who, would, who wouldn't do that. So what did, they, what, what did we think of what came out of this? So I, I told our team, our faculty members and the officers of our school that we should have a required hour for live streaming. Now, the question is, eh, sir, paano po yung mga walang ano, internet hindi makakapag live stream? Number one, the live stream can be downloaded afterwards. So those who do not have a live uh, who do not, do not have the capability to have a live stream will be able to download it. And maybe if they will ask the teachers, we can put it again in their flash drives. Second is, um, they can text their teachers during the huddle, okay? The huddle period. Ibig sabihin, yung iba, uh, nag, nag video dun sa may mga capacity, yung iba naman, open, required ang teachers na open yung kanyang cellphone so that he or she can receive text messages. Okay, aside from the weekly videos per subject, an hour per subject is given. Sorry for the, for the missing words. Live via teleconferencing will be undertaken while those without internet connectivity can text their questions while the live discussions, live discussion is ongoing. So yun na nga. So pwede habang nagla-live, meron, nag, meron namang nagte-text. Okay. Yung videos, before we go to the next slide, the videos I was not able to explain. The reason why we are going to put videos inside the flash drive is the fact that those videos can be watched through televisions. We all know that most of, if not all televisions nowadays have a port for flash drives. Or if they don't have that, we know that Filipinos love DVDs, even the DVD ports and so on and so forth. They can put it there, plug it in and watch it without even the use of internet. So that's the power of videos. Okay, let's proceed. Now, 
Another question. How sure are you if your activities are effective? I will be the first one to tell you that I am not really 100% sure if this will be effective at all. Uh, I can say that these are logical things that we can do, but how can we assure ourselves that the, how, how can we gauge rather the effectiveness or the, and the efficiency of our strategies? What we're going to do is we're going to have a week-long free pilot testing of actual implementation of the reimagined learning program for our students this coming July. So what we're going to do is to test, okay? Kumbaga, we will ask volunteers who will have a one-week class. We will simulate what will happen uh, on, uh, on August 24. So it will be for elementary, junior high school, senior high school from July 6 to 10. Then college, July 20 to 24. So what's our objective? To assess, analyze, and improve the program prior to opening of classes, okay? So now, just a summary, I'd like to show to you the summary video of this reimagining, reimagined learning program. Mga Daisians at sa mga minamahal naming magulang, as we all know, marami po ang nagtatanong at marami rin po ang nag-aalala kung paano po ang magiging setup ng ating edukasyon sa susunod na taong school year 2020-2021. Ngunit ang Dr. Yangas Colleges Incorporated, kaakibat ng ating mga guro at ng mga partners in education, ay patuloy na gumagawa ng mga kaparaanan upang makapagbigay pa rin ng kalidad na edukasyon para sa ating lahat. Now, as we transition to the new normal of education, DYCI has created a new program that encompasses blended modalities in teaching and learning to be used for the next school year 2020-2021. And this is what we call the Reimagined Learning Program. The roadmap for excellent and inclusive modalities and approaches towards God-centered and innovative new normal of education for our DICIANS. Now, this reimagined learning program offers extensive and flexible learning opportunities for all our DCN students, for all types of learners. If you have good internet connection at home, you can choose to study online. We have Schoology and Vsmart. Those are two learning educational platforms that we can use for the next school year 2020-2021. For those with internet access, we have what we call online learning. With the access to the internet, education can become more interactive with even more available media at the disposal of the learner. Gagamitin natin ang Schoology at Vsmart bilang online learning platforms for the next school year. Papaano naman po kung unstable ang ating internet connection sa bahay o wala po tayong internet connection? Meron po tayong sagot dyan. Ang ating mga Daisians po ay magkakaroon nitong USB flash drive exclusively for them. Ito po ay naglalaman ng mga modules, weekly videos, and other materials po na magagamit po nila sa kanilang pag-aaral. Maaari po nating i-view ang mga videos and modules using our gadgets such as mobile phones, laptops, and even TV monitors. Daisian modules ay pinasimple with its format idea, meaning introduction, discussion, examples, and application. Sa ating Daisian module, nandito ang mga instructions at discussion ng ating mga guro kasama ng mga materials na gagamitin natin for teaching and learning gaya ng textbooks at iba pang learning activities. At pangatlo, using our textbooks. Mas kinakailangan po natin ngayon ang ating mga textbooks dahil ito po ay gabay para sa ating mga mag-aaral from our experts na mas mapalalim ang kanilang kaalaman ukol sa mga konsepto na inaaral po nila sa klase. For the next school year 2020-2021, patuloy pa rin po ang ating weekly deepening. 
Meron din po tayong God-Centered Program. Meron din po tayong Home Time. Hear out my everything, courtesy of our guidance and counseling team. Patuloy po ang ating world-class robotics program. And meron din po tayong offline science experiments. To sum it all up, these modalities are classified into three. Sa mga wala pong internet connection, pwede po tayong gumamit ng offline and non-digital media. Ito po ay naglalaman ng mga printed modules, textbooks, workbook, booklets, and other printed resource materials na magagamit po ng ating mga mag-aaral. Pangalawa, kung wala pa rin pong internet connection pero meron pong mga gadgets and TV sets sa bahay na po pwedeng gamitin, pwede po tayong gumamit ng offline and digital media. These modules can serve as soft copies, ebooks, and some files that can be contained in the flash drive. At pangatlo, for those who have good internet connections in their houses, you can use online learning platforms. DYCI will use Schoology and vSmart as their learning management system for the next school year. These websites do contain lessons, activities, and even online quizzes that can be used by our learners to further deepen their understanding of the lesson for the week. Sa amin pong mga minamahal na Dicean Guardians and Parents, hindi lamang po no tuition fee increase for the next school year 2020-2021, kundi magkakaroon din po ng discount ang lahat ng estudyante mula preschool hanggang college. Sinisiguro po namin sa inyo na handa ang DYCI sa mga pangangailangan ng mga estudyante po natin for the next school year 2020-2021. We are assuring you that no student will be left behind and all of their needs in their education will be catered. Maraming maraming salamat po at hopefully magkita-kita po tayo sa susunod na school year. Okay, so... That's the summary of what we're going to do uh, for this next for this school year, for this coming school year. And as I have said, it's a work in progress. I cannot claim that those are best practices, but they are logical. These things can be done. And I'm I'm really sharing this with all of you because we know during this time the the Filipino spirit of Bayanihan should always be there. So I'm, I'm sharing all of this, these acronyms, these things. Maybe you can, we can spur the, your, your creativity to have your own. That's why hopefully I was able to, even in this very short uh, talk that I had, I, I could have or I have um, inspired all of you. You know, uh, just one more thing that I'd like to share with you. We are also planning and actually we are going to do this. Um, we have a lot of students who are from the marginalized sector. As I have said, our school is a private school also for the poor. So I have to really, I have to really consider the people from the poorest of the poor sectors. So given our continuous meeting and with our partners, we have devised a, a plan and we have devised a project we're in we will be able to allow students to borrow from DYCI 200 computers this coming school year so that they can return these computers by, by April after, after this school year. And then we're also going to choose the poorest of the poor that we can help in their internet load. So those are the things that we are doing as our social responsibility. You know, uh, dear teachers, many of you came to this talk to know the strategies and tactics. But what I would like to share with you here in this uh, short talk that I had is the inspiration to think out of the box and to really be inspired and to reflect that we are called to be heroes in this pandemic. We will soon be part of the frontliners of our nation. By August 24, we are all also frontliners. Even though it's a home-based learning style, we are still frontliners because we are the conduits, the first line of, of learning for the, for the students. 
I like to share with you um, an interview that I, I watched this morning with Melinda Gates, the wife of Bill Gates. You know, she shared with uh, with um, with the with the people with with her audience that she went to India so that they can help the poorest of the poor in the society of India. And they call this group as the rat eaters. Yes, rat, rat. Kumakain ng daga. This group is called the Musahars. Musahars. So Melinda Gates met a very inspiring lady. Her name is Sister Suda. Okay, Sister Suda. What did Sister Suda did? What did Su Su Sister Suda do? She invited girls to her school and taught them or gave or give them education. Nung pagdating daw po doon, nung umpisa ay mga, alam nyo po yun, di ba tayo mga teachers, kahit hindi magsalita ang mga estudyante, alam na natin kung, kung may confidence o walang confidence ang bata. So generally, majority of the girls that she invited na dun, dun siguro temporary tumira, pinaliguan niya, kitang-kita raw sa mata na walang kakumpiyansa-kumpiyansa sa sarili. But you know what? After some time, after some weeks, after some months, after being educated, it was totally different. The school was able to transform these girls into people who know what they want in their lives. So what's my point, dear educators, fellow educators? During this pandemic, during this new normal education, we are called to transform our students even in this kind of modality. And I know deep within each one of you is a hero. The strategies that I shared with you, madali po, mas maganda po yung, po yung mga magagawa nyo. But it all starts with empathy and the eagerness to really be instrumental in serving others. So with that, I would like to thank again Vibal for this opportunity to, to share with you our reimagined DYCI learning program. So I'll be Okay, so I'll be answering some of your questions. So from Okay, Maro, how and what support are you doing for your library or librarians? Aside from teachers and counselors, do you consider your library librarians as essential in your transition to online learning? Uh, that's, that's a challenge really, admittedly po. But now, uh, I, I asked our librarian, our chief librarian, to make sure that the, there are materials that will be available through online. So we have this e-library. We have partnered with, with a research company and at the same time other, other e-books company that we will make them available for our students. So they will be really instrumental also. They will be essential because they will be included in our reading program. So, so our library staff and library librarians need not worry. Okay, how can we assure from Anna Faye Tambio, how can we assure the validity of the task done by the students if they may be helped by their parents or whoever capable of doing? Uh, that's tough. Just like what I've heard from our um, talk last Sunday, uh, last Saturday, when I became part of a panel in a, higher education gathering, uh, they were saying that we need a lot of trust, okay? We need a lot of trust. But maybe, uh, just a suggestion, we can go with outcome-based. What do I mean? Uh, we have always been saying outcome-based learning, so maybe this is the time that, so that students will not cop be copying from one another. Maybe there will be projects that are innovative that they, they cannot be um, cheating, so to speak. So, siguro mga projects na uh, gagawa sila na kunwari ng insights nila, takeaways nila, 
then hindi na itatype para hindi na uh, hindi na hindi na downloaded ang mga sagot maybe they can do is to screenshot na uh, isusulat nila yung mga kanilang mga sagot or opinions pero ang point here is yes there will really be room for dishonesty here so we need really a lot of uh, help from our dear parents to make sure that there's integrity in the work that they are being uh, submitted by their children Are there still questions? Okay, so. Um, is there another one? Okay, so with that. Um, okay, there's. Okay, sir, what is the best? Uh, Sir, I'll be waiting for your question. Sir Ed Namoro. So if, if you still have some questions, I'll be waiting for your queries. What is the best practices in order to maintain the quality of the sports program in your institution? Actually, that's something that we haven't really focused on. So yeah, that's something that we have to talk about. Um, that's really a challenge now, the sports development, okay? The best thing here is to have a regular exercise program during the live uh, streaming with the PE teacher and maybe eventually there will be outcome-based activities that will ask the, pers the students to have more mobility in their houses. But yeah, we have to really still discuss the, those things about sports development. Sir, what are the roles of the health teachers from your school or the MAPE teachers? Well, they are, they are also part of the subjects that we're going to they're, go they're going to still teach the subjects and they are a part of the module development of our, uh, of our, of our students. So, kasama pa rin siya. Ang, ang magiging problem lang talaga is the practice of group sports. Yan. So, yun ang hindi pa namin talaga na pag-uusapan kasi talagang mahirap yung aspect na yun na how are we going to encourage ano, group sports no? given this, uh, this situation. As I said, this is really work in progress. Uh, regarding robotics, just I just would like to share with you. No? Regarding robotics, we have this um, online and offline virtual robotics. So because that's part of our culture, we were able to make, um, we make this uh, system of having it offline. So kaya po matutuloy po namin tong programa ng technology even though walang internet yung mga bata through the flash drive. Okay. Okay, so that's it. So let me again thank Vibal for this opportunity to share things that I have uh, the things that we're going to do this school coming school year. Hopefully you have you have been inspired even a bit and learned something that you can apply in your own school. So thank you very much, everyone, and God bless to all.